talk about Docker volumes, or sometimes called storage volumes. If you remember the GameCube from a couple decades ago, you'd pop in a game disc and play some of the greatest games ever made, like Super Smash Bros. Melee or Kirby's Air Ride. Now imagine you start playing Smash Bros and you actually unlock a few new characters. The problem is when you turn the GameCube off and back on again, all that data, the characters you unlocked, it was actually gone. Basically every time the GameCube restarted, it actually lost its internal memory. It's kind of like storing data in the variables of your program, like x equals two or y equals one. When your program restarts, those variables reset because they only lived in RAM. So to fix that, Nintendo released the memory card. The memory card was basically just a small hard disk. You'd plug it in while you were playing and save your progress to it. And then the next time you booted the GameCube, you could load that saved file. And now your unlocked characters actually stuck around. And this is basically exactly how Docker volumes work. The Docker image is like the game disk. The Docker container is like the running instance of the game. And the Docker volume? that's the memory card. So a Docker volume is just a piece of storage on disk that a container can use, but that does not disappear when the container is restarted or more likely when the container is shut down and replaced with a new one. Without a volume, a container can still access its local disk, but once that container is deleted and a new one is started, all that data is gone. It's wiped back to its original state of the image. And that happens a lot with containers. We usually treat them as temporary or ephemeral. So instead, we can attach a long lived volume to the container. Then when we spin up a new container later, we can pick up right where the last one left off using the same data from the volume.